Hello ladies and gents, I'm the Dapper Rat and you're watching Rat Rants. Today's subject, hitboxes. Hitboxes, hitboxes, hitboxes. The most important thing in just about any game being released today. Now for this video, when I say hitboxes, I'm specifically talking about collision zones that interact with the player. Hurtboxes will represent entities within the game and collision boxes will be kind of a catch-all working for both hitboxes and hurtboxes but also other collisions like the environment. Sound good? If not, too bad. Now I have a bone to pick with some devs because these collision boxes while I understand are probably tricky to deal with at times are so integral that if not done just right feels horrible. Let me clarify a bit. When you play a game, what you see is not what the game sees. What you see are these dynamic spaces and textures with lighting, but what the game sees is just a bunch of shapes. Because of this, there sometimes is a little, or in some cases, a lot of disconnect between what you see and what the game sees. For example, I'm gonna grab Huntress from Dead by Daylight. She is a killer that has these throwable hatchets that she uses to hit survivors to hurt them. The problem is that the hatchet hitbox is way larger than the hatchet itself and survivor hurt boxes are way larger than the survivor. This means that from both point of views there is a lot of bullshittery that happens from game to game. This creates an inconsistency problem that feels really really bad for everyone involved. And there are tons of examples of this within Dead by Daylight from Trapper's Traps, Deathslinger's Harpoon, Trickster's Knives. Lights Rushes, Billy's Bums, Clown's Bottles, Demo's Leap, Bubba's Chainsaw, Nemesis Tentacle, Unknown Balls, Freddy's Claws, and probably more that I'm forgetting. That's quite big. Impressive. Seriously, cutting back to Nemesis for a second, the fact that on some windows in some maps your power works like this is enough to make anyone clinically insane. I mean, Jesus fuck. But it's not just DBD. It's the women, and the children too. Moving on to the Soulsborne series, but more specifically Elden Ring, sometimes hitboxes just aren't what they look to be. Sometimes, that sword slash you thought you cleverly spaced out correctly, that you were just out of reach, you actually were correct. You did read it correctly, but unfortunately, you used your eyes. But this, this is what the game saw. FromSoft, respectfully, I love you guys, but what the fuck is this bullshit? Not only is the hitbox like what, seven times thicker than his sword, but also like a third longer than what I'm seeing on screen. Let me be a bit more technical here. The problem isn't that the, the hitboxes are too big, that's unfair, it's the hitboxes are inaccurate. With the expansion to a wider audience, Elden Ring has been held under higher scrutiny for some things it's essentially known for, mostly it's uncaring difficulty. People saying that you can't beat the game without looking up the guides and such, which is, for the most part, met with a get good mentality. However, when the game is flat out just lying to you like this, like what part of this is get good? I see his sword, I time my dodge or space myself based on seeing his sword, but his sword isn't his fucking sword. And the only way to know is to die enough times where you're like, I think his hitboxes are bullshit or to search up a guide and see that in fact his hitboxes are bullshit. Which bleeds into other problems where now someone who sees this is primed to believe that most of their deaths might actually be too bullshit and not just a skill issue. And on a different note, Elden Ring gives your lower body iframes when jumping. I mean, <laughs> look at the hurtboxes. Now to be honest, this does add fluidity into the game and makes it easier to use jump attacks which made me think perhaps I'm biased. I like it when bullshit helps me more than when it doesn't. Which is true for the most part. I'm only human after all. But at the same time, no. Because the only reason we need over half of our fucking body to be invulnerable is because these hitboxes are anywhere from 3 to 7 times thicker than what I'm seeing. <sighs> alright, alright, it's okay. Next on the chopping block is Overwatch. Now, back in Season 9, if I remember correctly, everyone across the board got a buff to their hitboxes. This also came with a buff to their amount of health, but that's besides the point. Whether the buffs helped with balance is not the argument. It's how dog shit the hitboxes feel. I mean, look at some of these. 
Look at this. Think for a second, how the fuck do you peek this? Sim can just spam out a corner whilst at the same time essentially spamming the entire hallway and this creates problems everywhere. I see it time and time again. I get headshot by a hitscan widow whose crosshair isn't on me. I die to a Hanzo arrow despite literally being behind a wall and vice versa sometimes. My aim is straight cheeks, doo doo water, uncontested amounts of dog butter. Yet I am still rewarded. I mean, for the love of God, I can't take it anymore. On a more serious note, I understand that sometimes hitboxes need to feel a bit bad for the sake of either simplicity to make it easier on some of these overworked developers or even to balance certain competitive games, but please, for the love of god, try to avoid making hitboxes, hurtboxes, and collision zones different from what's seen on screen. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and as always, farewell ladies and gents.